Farming in Africa YouTube channel. We want to say a big thank you for the love, the support, the solidarity you've shown in these trying times. We don't take it for granted at all. Thank you. A lot of well-meaning people have also reached out to seek an interview with Fred to better understand what is going on, to even try and answer some of the questions that are coming in. And so today right here at the Semesha Learning and Development Farm at Brekum Sanase, we have a very famous influencer in the agri space popularly and affectionately known as the Ghanaian farmer. And your name is right here today to have an interview with Fred. Please stay tuned. I believe most of your questions would be addressed in this interview. If they are not, worry not. Just put them right there in the comment section and we will do our best to come again to address all of them. Please, if you are new here, we have a lot coming your way and you don't want to miss it. Do subscribe to this channel and if you've already subscribed, you know what to do. Hit the notification button to be the first to receive any updates we bring your way. Enjoy this interview with Fred and, and you know, the Ghanaian farmer. that governs us as humans or in our day-to-day -day life activities. We are encouraging a lot of people in the diaspora to come back home and invest in our community to create jobs and help young people stop running away from the country to go look for greener pastures. This year in uh, 2024, I've seen a video of a colleague who is a farmer and also a content creator going through um, a very sad situation because this is somebody who has lived most of his life abroad but decided to come back home to invest in his community after five years of investing in different types of farming helping creating jobs and also putting food on people's table custom or tradition or taboo is forcing him to leave or evacuate at an unexpected time when he's not ready. It is common knowledge. Even at where we do our sweet potato farm, we are told you can't work on Mondays. That is okay. Tractor cannot work on Mondays. It is something you can manage. However, where I'm talking about Brekum in the Bronga Hafu region, precisely in a community called Asinase, is where farming in Africa or Semencia Farms is based. And over five years, they've invested heavily in this community, creating jobs and other things that people are enjoying. However, the owners of the land says you can't wear goods in their land. And they've watched or looked on for all these years after these huge investment. I will show you the whole view of the farm for you to see what have been done over there with over 200 goods. They have to evacuate it, whether you sell, you slaughter, or whatever happens, you got to move. And so, it saddens my heart, as a content creator and an investor as well, I am here, all the way from Accra with my team, to find out what exactly happened. Did he know about this, or he wasn't aware? When did this whole hula belly start? And what is he doing about it? How is he going to start afresh? When land issues are a bit tricky and difficult, I mean, let me let me talk to him and listen to what exactly is happening. Fred, thanks for joining me. Thank you, Anima. So after watching your video, I was very disturbed. I felt like, isn't this going to discourage other young Africans, especially Ghanaians who are looking forward to coming back to their community to invest? What exactly is the real situation? Um, thank you. Yes, this is how our 2024 started. Mm. So, we, we are located in Ghana, in the Bunahafu region, in the Breku municipality, right. and in a small town called Sinase. Mm. This is where I am from. Mm. And just like you said in your intro, every community has its own taboos and do's and don'ts. Yeah. I grew up here, and I'm a native of this community. 
growing up as a kid, obviously there are a lot of taboos that have been overlooked. Mm. Uh, for example, this community that we are in, the t one of the taboos is you can't even wear dogs. Okay. But growing up as a kid, I had a dog. Everybody had a dog. Another one is you can't have goat here. But everybody had goat when I was growing up. Right. So for years and years, some of these taboos have been overlooked, you know, and growing up and coming back into agriculture, um, my intention wasn't actually goat. I started with cattle, moved um, into poultry, and finally settled at goat, not knowing that um, in 2024, in December of 2023, such a news is going to hit us. But what happened initially was somewhere in July, uh, my team called me and said, hey, there has been an announcement in town saying everybody should vacate their goats. Okay. Um, they, and they've been given three days. Mm. People were like, oh, is that true? This yeah. is not possible. You know, this hasn't happened in years. <laughs> like, this is our livelihood yeah. and so on and so forth. Mm. But after the three days, some gentlemen came into the town mm -hmm. and slaughtered all the goats in this community. What? Yes, they killed people's pregnant goats, young goats, males, and took it away. Not even slaughter and leave it. And leave it for the owners, yes, but yes, yes, take yes, everything yes. away. They took everything away, you know. So they told me, and I was like, ah, what is going on? Yes. If this is true, then that is serious. Mm. Then later, another rumor was that, oh, it was just for goats that are roaming around Loitering about. in the community. Okay. And they didn't even come to our farm because, as you can see, our farm is fenced, exactly. gated, and all that. So I was like, oh, okay. If that's the case, then okay. That means that we are safe. So we went by our business for the past three, four months now. And recently, my mom, I was actually in South Africa when my mom was sermoned to okay. go to the palace. The chief's palace? Yes. Okay. So she got to the palace and they actually informed her that the queen mother of Rekum has decided that, um, you know, everybody should move their goat, but we hadn't moved our goat. Mm. Why? Mm. Um, and my mom said, oh, what we heard was that it was goats that were on the street yeah. roaming. Mm. My son's goats are fenced and yeah. all that and so on. And he says, no, mm. everybody needs to move their goats and we need to move our goats. So my mom told me and I said, okay. If that's what um, we've been told, mm -hmm. then now it's official. So mm. let's go and see the Queen Mother and yeah. see how best we can handle this situation. Um, I think when it comes to goat farming in West Africa in general, we haven't commercialized exactly. it like it needs to. It's done so, on small scale. Exactly. So mm. maybe in the minds of the elders, mm. it is something small. Yeah. But maybe we can paint a better picture for them to see the amount of investment that has gone into this exactly what we are doing so they got a couple of chiefs and went um, to see one of the spokesperson and he came to actually the farm to see it mm. and said yes I've seen your farm mm. but unfortunately we give you two weeks what you guys need to take all your goat out of this um, township so at the moment, that's what we are dealing with. So if you saw the video, then that is what is happening here. We've been given two weeks to take out all these goats um, from the farm. I am not, it is not my investment, but honestly, I'm a young woman just like he's a young man who has saved enough to put all of this together. How many acres are you operated on? Um, now we are operating on six acres. And it, roughly, not an exact figure. Over the period of five years, how much do you think you've invested in this facility? Wow. Over the period of five years. I can give you some numbers. So in yes. 2022, Averagely. we invested about a million cities here. In last year alone, we started building the biggest goat pen in Africa, which is actually in this community mm. on another land. Mm. That pen alone, if we haven't finished, but we've already invested about almost 500000 mm. plus what we did here. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, over the past five years, I would say we are, we are heading to about 5 million cities. 
um, investment. That is just on on infrastructures. The breeds that we have here, as you know, are coming from Mali, are Different coming from countries. South Africa. And one of these breeds is costing us about thousand five hundred dollars. What? Right. So even if we have ten, yeah, that's a know, lot of money. That's, that's a lot of money here. No, so, um, yeah. did your family own the land, or you had to go and seek permission, and then you bought it from the leaders? Yeah, yeah. Which is which? So I bought I bought the land from the traditional uh, leaders. Did you tell them what the purpose of the land was? No, I just told them I'm coming to use it for a farm. But when I started the farming, they know. Okay. I mean, they all pass through mm -hmm. here to go to their farm. So they know it's a goat farm. Mm -hmm. um, and we've had it for years. And mm -hmm. nobody has ever stepped here to tell us that, hey, this you're doing, you can do it mm -hmm. here. This is just an order from, not from this community, but from the Brecombe um, chief, basically. Um, yeah, so the community here, the chiefs, they, they know of this project mm. since the beginning of it. Mm. They, they looked on for yeah. you to have invested to this far before they are asking you to evacuate within two weeks. Yes, um, unfortunately. So at the moment what we are trying to do is actually plead with them to give us more time. Uh -huh. We've had, I think, twice right. a meeting with Engagement. them. Um, but they still have said Nothing no. really has changed. Yeah. Uh, Fred, how does this make you feel as a young investor who has thought about your people? Um, you've, you have a school, you have other properties in this space just to create a bit more of attention because I know you have people that other time I saw some investors from different countries coming for a tour in your farm. All these people I am sure would have in years to come come and also purchase a land to invest. How does this make you feel? I think first of all, I think it's, it's sad, you know, um, we are on a mission here, not selfishly for our own gain, but to, to inspire a lot of youth, Africa, um, and this is really going to be a huge setback for us, you know, I'm not a guy that quits, so definitely I'm sure, I don't have the answers now to what I'm going to do next, but I'm sure I'll come up with something. Mm. But whatever I come up with, I have to start from scratch. Exactly. The, the amount of investment that I've gone into this, not just, you know, money, but preparing the land, the, the feed that we have planted, like everything, keeping this place, you know, from growing alone, it's not easy. Like, there's so much, there's a lot that we can take with us, even if you're supposed to relocate. So it's a huge setback, and a setback not just to me personally as an investor, but also to the journey that we were on in, in, in revolutionizing livestock farming in, in Africa. So, I mean, I just, I just hope they will reconsider, um, but I also want to be respectful of, mm. of their rules and regulations. Um, but. It, it hasn't been the great news for us um, entering into 2024 because we never dreamt something like this could right. ever happen, especially.
and as I said, I don't have the answers now, and I don't make I want to make any hasty yeah. decisions. Yeah. But this is this doesn't create a conducive environment right. for investment because whatever I can liquidate from here, I think the question I ask myself is, how much is it worth? Could there be slaughtering of goats every year to appease the goats that will let them continue doing business? Or is there anything?
they are heads. They are traveling, you know. But <laughs> oh my goodness. This is what it has come to. Indeed. Indeed. So um there's more to come. Follow Farming on Africa, the channel, and I'm sure he will keep you posted with happenings. I mean, after the two weeks, if they'll be given another grace period, I'm sure he will.